So I'm Harsh. I work as the lead data scientist at the Ministry of Rural Development. And I was here to present the work which we've been doing at uh, PMGSY. Uh, hey, my name is Pranav. Uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Chatwood. Uh, we are an open source customer engagement platform. My name is Apar Gupta. I work at the Internet Freedom Foundation and we work on the intersection of digitization and its impact on society. Okay, hi. Hi everyone. I'm Mohammed Shamoon. Uh, I work for a software company called Coloredco. Hi, my name is Karan and I work at Zeroda. I really like to contribute to open source. Hi everyone, I'm Rishabh and I got into open source back in college. My name is Aditya Prasad. I'm doing a PhD in the Institute of Science Bangalore, IISC Bangalore. Uh, okay. Hello, my name is Tejas and uh, uh, I work with Reap Benefit. Reap Benefit is a not-for-profit organization. I think uh, I think I like the community part of it. Even before like working for the government, even back in college, I really like the community part of it. You can have any question, and you can there are people around the world who are working or using the same code and trying to do the same things as you are using. So I I, I think back in college I really like the community angle of it. But now. While I'm working within the government, free and open source is uh, more practically useful because you can do a lot of the state-of-the-art things you want to do without, you know, relying on procurement or doing something, going for some commercial software. So you can do a lot of good stuff within the government. Yeah, I think uh, for me, open source actually gives you a lot of, uh, you know, opportunities. Um, uh, in a sense that, you know, it could it could give you expansion beyond the way you can think of, um, maybe to different markets, to different languages so for example like even chatwood actually has around 30 plus different languages which is being contributed by more than 200 people which is amazing because like you know your software which is being written um, maybe like in, in in english is used in thai or like you know in vietnamese or maybe like you know in spanish which i i don't think like you know it, those kind of scale might not be possible with being a proprietary organization my favorite part it's about the collaboration and the thinking of how people are uh, like coming together and thinking of a solution and then they're just posting and we're dis on a discussion. So how people are coming together and thinking of a solution of a problem that we are trying to solve in the real world. That's what open source is about, uh, I think, open minding and discussion. Because whatever I've learned, I've learned from open source repositories. So it's just fair to uh, give it back to the community and in the hopes that someone else may uh, learn from it, may find it useful, may find it beneficial or if they want to tweak it in a certain way for their own use, I find it uh, more liberating rather than just closed sourcing my code and which doesn't give any uh, benefit to the society. My favorite part of this open source community is that my background is of a lawyer and I get to meet and talk to people who code and who design systems and also have a political belief system in free and open source software which somewhat intersects with my interests. So they're open, they're curious and it's really easy to talk to. And when you're somebody who's working on uh, digitization and technology, it, it's, it's, you need to know the subject area very well and you at this place get this opportunity to talk to people who are actually building it, who are curious about it, who want to think about the social impacts of technology and but come from a very different background. So it's a great space. I got to know about open source through my friends who I studied with in bachelors. And we were really passionate about the cause because we felt like having so many eyeballs on the problem, being able to make it up, do public good and allowing the software to be shared for free without having private interests controlling the software we use on a daily basis was a really important cause to my heart. I could see the problems what, which would happen when you give a private company so much power over what we use every day. That's what got me into soft, open source. Uh, for me, the open source community shows me the, the good parts of humanity. The fact that even though they're very educated, they have, their time is very valuable. They're being paid by these top companies. They take their free time to spend, uh, create free code software for people to use. I think that really makes me trust in humanity again. You know, like they're really so altruistic. And uh, that's, my, I think, my favorite part of open source. Also, the fact that it is, anyone, anyone can give recommendation. They can, uh, if you don't like the product, you can take, take it and make it a slightly different product and offer a competition. So the free market operates. There's always competition and better options always there for the consumer. 
Yeah, Arduino, uh, just because I like to tinker and build uh, uh, solutions or like products, uh, like maybe IoT devices and things like that. And uh, yeah, Python is because uh, data science and yeah. So Python is quite generic. It was primarily with React, so that is a good framework to start. Like I really love that, like how they conceptualized after JavaScript. So that I really love. Apart from that, various other things like Code Sandbox, it is there. You can uh, like play and plug and play. I think like any Linux uh, operating system, like you know, it's it's pretty amazing. Like you know what people have built uh, to pick a specific uh, project. I think like you know there are quite a lot of application projects which I follow like I use I think Kailash's Lismong is something which we use pretty uh, pretty much uh, I mean like it's Kailash's project right Lismong so we use that pretty much uh, every time like you know uh, so I think to pick a favorite there are a couple of one like GitLab is one one thing like you know, which I look forward for like it's it's one of the biggest you know open source projects I've seen like you know working in a, working as as a business as well as an open source project and still have very large uh, community behind them and then uh, you know like projects like uh, Tooljet or uh, you know uh, Lismong which are coming up from India those are like you know pretty exciting for me and I, I would say like I think like you know there are quite a lot of good projects from India who, who has gotten uh, world's attention which is which is pretty fascinating. My favorite one would be I think Firefox only and I, I use it so much like I love the Mozilla Firefox yeah I, I think so like it is the community of plugins it offers, the level of, it's also not very user friendly, like open source development has a, has a reputation of being very utility oriented, but I like how Mozilla has taken effort to make it easy to use too. UX and UI is also important for them. So I think it's better than Chrome and uh, Edge and other options in the table. I would say, like I should say that I really like the Pandas and machine learning Python part. But like over time, in the last couple of years, I've been using QGIS a lot and GIS is not my domain and machine learning is, but I think if I had to pick a software, I think I really like QGIS. It was awesome. It was really great. It's a uh, learning experience for me. Uh, I've been, this is my first conference actually for the open source community, so yeah, that was a really great experience. Yeah, I think uh, Force United uh, has been instrumental in like giving platform for new projects or like you know the, the people who are working behind projects uh, to like to give them a stage to present uh, present their projects in India and I think like you know they have been successful in that um, like we got an opportunity to present uh, chatboot in the previous conference and it was amazing and I think like you know they are still continuing we we have heard the talk about Rudra who is like 12 years old right so that's like the, the, the stage which we are giving I think like you know we are still continuing that and I, I think like you know Postmeet actually uh, do well in that, so yeah. And happy to be here. Uh, it's the second uh, Postmeet uh, in India, and uh, uh, I'm very excited because, like you know, this one is a very large uh, event compared to what it was before. Uh, it's it's pretty exciting. It's uh, yeah, I and mean, kudos to all the people who have worked behind this. So a lot of conferences that I go in, they are uh, highly uh, uh, company sponsored and a lot of uh, companies are uh, there to pitch their products but I find, uh, I don't find that anything of that sort here. It's all uh, FOSS like, uh, like minded individuals uh, gathered, uh, gathered around talking about FOSS software, FOSS uh, philosophies and uh, principles. So that's what I think, I don't think there's any other conference like this in India. And that's why I came here. What brings me today to this conference is the very free in freedom is where I work, Internet Freedom Foundation, and we are at um, India Force here. And um, I'm really happy to see the community expand. A greater amount of footfall here. It seems a little less insular, more diverse in a gender-based category. And these are all good signs that there is uh, more interest, there's more growth and there's more conversation around free and open source software which I didn't think was happening this effectively because we didn't have convening spaces like this. And in this particular event is it's in Bangalore, I'm here, all my friends are here, I, I, met, I met really good friends by coming to these events. Before it was an all India thing, it was a Bangalore level meetup in Deep Source. I used to be to visit there and I met, I reconnected with my old friend from school. So it is like a serendipitous occasion. So I really like the physical aspect of being able to see people face to face and talk to them like that. I like it. I like it because I'm around tech audience again. That's something which I missed back in the government. So this is nice. Uh, I'm, it, 
reminds me of college days. I think there's a lot of young energy around and a lot of like, you can overhear people talking about code, people talking about certain frameworks or opening things, etc. So I think it's nice to be in that conversation and I think I've missed that. And so this is a good way of getting that back into my day to day. Uh. The last one in 2020 was great, but this time it's at a much bigger magnitude, but it's so well organized and it feels homely and it's a uh, it's, it's an environment where everyone is feeling encouraged by each other, so that's great. I mean, the event just inspires everyone to keep working on their side projects and the, the things they really want to do. So yeah, let's keep doing that together. Yeah. I do have a message uh, for developers and people in general. Um, so uh, one of the recent uh, uh, civic studies show that uh, more than 5 out of 10 people now uh, feel a climate anxiety. Uh, another civic study shows that less than 1% of people try to do something to solve a problem. So, I mean, I would let that sink in uh, to anyone who's listening to this. And then there's a huge growing number, right? Like more than 5 people who are doing something. Uh, and yes, like uh, there is a, if you have any idea, you can definitely figure out a way to do it without really needing to spend any money using FOSS. Uh, so, honestly speaking, like, you know, India has very large uh, developer population, but we have not seen good, like, there are good products, I'm not saying, like, you know, there are not good products, but we need more and more uh, open source projects, or, like, you know, we need more and more uh, good open source projects which can come out. That education has to be there, and I think, like, you know, these events would uh, bring that to, uh, you know, crucial, but, yeah. I mean, uh, for whoever likes to contribute to open source, keep continuing doing good work. And uh, open source is a like a, like I said, it's a really great way to give back to the society. Whatever you learn is uh, whatever you develop in your software that is also open source. So it's only fair from your part to give back uh, in a way that is meaningful for others. I think uh, so. I think you sh like eventually I realized. Uh, I never thought like conferences would help anybody. It's just a way I can see on YouTube also. But when you get together and meet in person, you get a different worldview of things. Like when you talk to other people, uh, like there's always a physical connection that, that you see in their eyes or you can uh, connect with them. And then things really happen. Most of the stories that I heard are people who met in conferences and then they started building something. So I think uh, it's really like uh, take some time and think about it and try to come up with these conferences or just attend uh, these conferences. So yeah, I think I learned a lot from here. Uh, I'll try to build over that. Thanks. Yeah, so I just want to say that I think this space is not just reserved for developers and I think it's open to everyone else. I used to be a developer. I love being here, but I work in absolutely the opposite things right now in sales, support, writing. So, but it still is a safe space for people like that too. So I just want to say that even if you're not a developer, you should still come to these events because there is so much, like there's equally, then equal amount to learn by being here. So that's it. From, from, the, from the legal field, what I'd like to say is that a lot of lawyers these days are getting interested in tech policy and it's very important for them to understand the people who are developing the technology itself not only by talking to them based on a specific work outcome but actually integrating them integrating in conversations with them much more deeply only when we are able to understand their motivations their thinking rather than just abstract lines of code which we ask for explanation uh, it, it's uh, you actually get to understand what, what what's the underlying foundation of what we are working on. So I'd like to encourage more lawyers and policy professionals and I know there are so many in Bangalore to come here and to participate and to join the conversation. I feel very very comfortable and I think that's important for me to tell people who watch this. Uh, please come to this conference because this is a place where you don't feel out of depth because you may not have the best skills either as a coder, as a lawyer, as a policy professional. There's a genuine sense of warmth all around this conference. People are smiling here if you notice when they're walking all around. And that's a very big thing. You don't usually see that in a conference, right? 